All right, so our mask has had the chance to dry overnight. And if we look at it, we can see that the cheesecloth has all hardened up onto the mask. What we're going to do is we're going to take this cheesecloth mask off of the plastic mask. That requires flexing it a little bit and trying to get the pieces off. And the cheesecloth has a lot of flex to it right now. It will bend a bit. If we bend it too much, it will crack. But so far, so good. The toughest bits to get it out of is where the end of the nose is. We'll try to keep the mask from breaking though. And we'll keep flexing. I'm trying to get our mask off. It feels like you're gonna break something, but you probably won't. And the nose is the part that's trickiest. And there we go. The mask comes off and we have our own cheesecloth mask. But we are gonna keep the plastic mask around because each time we work on the mask, we're always gonna set it on the plastic to dry. The next thing that I want to do is trim away a little bit of the excess material from around the edge of my mask. When I try it on my face, it's a little bit bigger than what I need. It's going to dip down over my lip a bit. It's going to be a little bit too much on the sides. So I'm going to get rid of the messy ends and just roughly create a shape. So I'm just going to draw. And trim. So I've drawn a little bit of what I'm going to cut away. It doesn't have to be perfect. I may end up cutting off more a little later on. I can just use regular scissors and trim. Cutting a little way under the nose. Not worrying too much about mistakes. Cutting off those loose ends. And now I've got a mask that's a little more of a shape that we expect. And I'll just rest it on the plastic mask for now. If you find that your mask is a little bit too big for your face, that's okay, because every time we work on the mask and let the mask dry, we have a chance to reshape it. If it's too big, I'm just going to take a piece of tape and put it on the back of my plastic mask, cinching it in a little bit to hopefully what I think will be the right size for my mask to be. And when I put the mask on top of this and let it dry, I'll curve it around and it'll fit this new size. For the next part of the build, you want to start to add the features to your mask. And the great thing about building these masks is you can make some really big, exaggerated features and come up with really wild and wonderful characters. It's really whatever your imagination wants. The way I like to build mine is I tend to build it out of whatever I have at hand. And the thing that I've found most useful is actually sheets of tin foil. Because as I'm building my mask, I want to add features to it, but I want it all to be very, very lightweight. And the tin foil is going to work really well. Because if I crumple tin foil very lightly, I can get a very big shape that takes up a lot of space, but it has very, very little weight. And maybe this is going to be a forehead ridge or maybe a nose or something. And the great thing about using the tin foil is I'm going to hot glue it to the mask. It's going to hold a shape. I'm going to use more cheesecloth and more glue to cover it. So the strength is going to come from cheesecloth and glue. The foil, the lightweight foil or foam or balled up paper towel, whatever you want to use, is just giving shape. 
So I'm gonna start playing with some of this tin foil. I'm gonna make eyebrow ridges, maybe pop out the cheeks a little bit. You name it, we'll see what I end up with. Anything that I like, I'm gonna keep in place and just tack down with a bit of glue. One thing I want to make sure of is where the eyes are going to be. I'm gonna to have to cut those out later. And because of that, I don't want any tin foil over the eye holes because that's an area that I'm gonna actually have to sand out and the metal is gonna make it hard for the sander to get through that. Let's keep working. When you're ready to start gluing onto your mask, be really careful. The hot glue is incredibly hot. And I may want to start putting the feature down, tack a little glue onto either the foil or the mask itself, but I want to be careful because if I have hot glue on this and place it there, I might burn my fingers. So be careful. Couple dabs of glue, get it roughly in place. Don't worry about little holes or gaps. That's going to get covered with cheesecloth. I'm even going to use a little piece of scrap foam here and make a really oversized nose for this character. And this can be pretty fun. Again, it only has to get held in place with the glue. Be careful that you don't burn yourself. You might have to hold it in place for a little bit to get it to stay. And here's the great thing about building your mask. It doesn't have to be perfect. If something dries in the wrong direction, if something doesn't come out exactly as you planned, that is completely okay. Because in that moment, you've actually created for your character something that's going to be a little more interesting. Something that's got a little more personality. And as you can see, it takes a little while for that hot glue to set. So I'm just holding it back in place again. And it should dry pretty quickly there. And I should be ready to keep adding. I may want to add more to the nose. I may want to keep it as it is. We'll see how it gets going as I get moving along with this. It's amazing how little tin foil you need to make a big piece. Because even a tiny piece of tin foil like this, when I ball it up loosely and place it on the cheek, can make a very big feature out of very little material. And I'll glue that one down. You have complete control over what you're going to make. Just be careful, the glue is hot. I'm just gonna keep adding these features. Got another one here. Once you're happy with the features you've created, and again, creating a big, exaggerated mask is what we're going for, we're gonna cover it with cheesecloth. Let's go to the next step. Okay, our next step is to add cheesecloth over all the features we've just created. Now what's going to be really important here is that we need to cover all the foil, all the foam, all of the pieces we've added, and we have to make sure that the cheesecloth that we put over it starts on the existing cheesecloth and covers the feature. Every piece that we've added out of foil and foam has to get locked down. And that means all the way around the feature, the cheesecloth has to touch the original cheesecloth. Let's get to work. I have my watered down glue again, and I start working. I don't have to add a whole new layer of cheesecloth all over the mask. 
I just have to cover the new pieces I've added and make sure it locks to the old cheesecloth that's there. And you need to make sure that any feature you created gets completely covered. So if you've got a big horn coming off of it or anything like that, you need to make sure that you get all of that piece covered in cheesecloth. And while you're at it, you've got the eyes. And if you have any soft, fluffy glue on the eyes, it's a good idea right now to hit them or to hit the soft, fluffy fabric with a little bit of glue because that's gonna make it so much easier to cut that out next day. So I'm gonna keep working. Working from the middle of the piece to the edges, any imperfections are gonna make a great character features here. As you can see, I've almost got that eyebrow completely covered. I can see some foil there. A really good idea is to keep turning your mask and looking at it from all angles to make sure you haven't missed any pieces like I have right here. When this all dries, the strength in your mask is going to come from the cheesecloth over the features locked onto the mask itself. So making sure you've got that overlap from features onto mask is going to be incredibly important because it's the cheesecloth that gives the mask strength, not the hot glue. The eyebrows are looking pretty good so far except I can see when I tip it up like this that I've actually missed locking that foil down to the mask right here. So I have to make sure I get some cheesecloth from here over into this space here. So I'm gonna work on that next. If I find that my mask is getting really soft because here's what happens. Every time I add new glue, I soften up my mask. If it's getting too soft, I can always lay it on the plastic mask and help it keep its shape. On the bottom edge of this cheek, I can see I've come to the edge of my mask, but I also have some exposed foil and this gap, this opening. I'm gonna let that fold right over the mask a tiny bit and see if that'll close that all up. So I might need another little piece of cheesecloth and I also want to get right into this nostril that I've created. You want to make sure that you're not leaving any white fluffy fibers around. You want everything well saturated with the glue because that's going to dry nice and hard all over the mask and give it its strength. Okay, I think my mask is just about ready to sit and dry for another night. I'm gonna take a quick look over it and make sure that I have cemented down every piece of foil or foam that I've added. I'm gonna make sure that it covers the foil and goes right onto the body of the mask. That looks good there. I've gone into those little divots and holes in here around the nostril, around the cheek. That looks good. I don't see any white and fluffy fibers, so I think I'm doing okay there as well. I see a little foil poking through, and I might put a piece over that. Or I don't have to worry about it because I'm still going to put tissue paper over it as one of my next steps later on. It looks pretty good. All of the fibers 
look like they're covered in glue. So that means when this dry, all of this will become one big solid mask. And as you can see, it's got very, very exaggerated features. And for this kind of mask, this is what I want. It makes it a lot more fun to create a character like this. We're gonna let this dry and we'll come back next day for the next step. One more thing, as you're setting your mask to dry on top of the plastic mask, if you have pulled in the mask to make it a little bit smaller to fit on your face, you want to make sure that you're pushing your mask around this new plastic shape to make it dry a little smaller and a little tighter to fit your face. Now let it dry. Don't forget to clean out the brushes because they are covered in glue. And don't forget to put the cap back on your bucket of glue because you're going to need it again for next day.